Okay, so you may have seen a nice way to remember the exact values of sine, cos, and tan for 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. And there's actually a really elegant way of remembering not just these values, but also for 15 degrees, 22.5 degrees, 67.5 degrees, and 75 degrees as well. This might seem like a strange collection of angles, but it's essentially just our classic 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. Then we also add in half of each of these angles. A half of 0 we've already included is just 0. Half of 30 gives us our 15, half of 45 is our 22.5, and half of 60 and half of 90 are already included. Then we also add in our complementary angles, so 90 minus 15 gives us our 75, and 90 minus 22.5 gives 67.5. So let's see how this trick works for sine theta for each of these angles. So we'd start with sine of 0. We know that sine of 0 is just 0, but we can write this in a very elaborate way as the square root of 2 minus root 4, all over 2. Then moving on to the next one, sine 15, we just decrease this 4 down to a 3, so it's root 2 minus root 3 all over 2. Then moving on to the next one, the 3 goes down to a 2, take away root 1 for sine 30, then take away root 0 for sine 45. So then the next thing we might be tempted to do is 2 minus the square root of minus 1. But of course you can see this isn't going to work for sine 60 degrees, but the pattern continues you can essentially think of this as having negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, negative 0. Then we go on to positive 1. So you add root 1 for sine 60. Then similarly we add root 2, add root 3, and finally add root 4 for sine of 90 degrees. So what about cos? Well, we know that sine theta is equivalent to cos 90 minus theta. So once we've got all the values for sine theta, we can just read off the values for cos theta as well. So we know that sine 0 takes this value, and we also know that sine 0 is going to be cos 90 minus 0. So this is actually just cos 90 degrees here. Then for the next one, sine 15 is cos 90 minus 15, so cos 75. And similarly, we can continue with this pattern. So we get cos 67.5, cos 60, then cos 45, cos 30, cos 22.5, cos 15, and finally we get cos 0, it's the same as sine 90. And then for tan theta, we can just find sine theta, find cos theta, and do sine theta divided by cos theta. So this really does tell us all of our values for sine, cos, and tan for each of these angles. Of course, there's some simplifying to do with each of these expressions, and some of them we can actually denest the square roots as well. So we'll have a look now at simplifying each of these expressions for sine theta. So first of all, for sine 0, this is nice and easy to simplify. We can just turn our root 4 into a 2, which gives us root 2 minus 2 all over 2. So we just have root 0 over 2, and we see that the formula works. Sine 0 is indeed 0. So what about sine 15? Well, this one, we can actually denest the square roots here. So essentially, the technique that we want to apply here, a standard trick for denesting square roots, is we want to try and make 2 minus root 3 look more like something along the lines of a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, which would then be equal to a minus b all squared, which would allow us then to denest the square root. So to get this factor of 2, I'm going to actually take out a factor of a half here. So I'll write all of this as just a half, 4 minus 2 root 3. And you can see we've got something in the numerator now where we've at least got a factor of 2, like our 2ab term there. Let's take out this square root of a half and we'll put this into the denominator now. So leaving the numerator alone, we have 4 minus 2 root 3, and this is all divided now by 2 root 2, taking this factor of square root of a half, putting it into the denominator. So the next thing to make this look like a squared minus 2ab plus b squared is we'll actually split this 4 up into 3 and 1. So you have 3 minus 2 root 3 plus 1. So this is all still the same expression, just written in a slightly different way all still divided by 2 root 2, but then you can see that 3 minus 2 root 3 plus 1, this is actually what you would get if you were to expand just root 3 minus 1 all squared. So this is really nice now because we have the square root of something squared, so this just gives us root 3 minus 1 all over 2 root 2. And then we can rationalise the denominator here as well, so multiplying on the top and bottom by root 2, you get root 2 into root 3 minus 1, all over multiplying by root 2, you have 4 in the denominator now. So this is our nice simplified expression for sine 15 degrees. 
Now our expression for sine 22.5 degrees is actually in the simplest possible exact form here, so not all nested square root expressions can be denested or simplified. So here we just leave this as it is, as our nice simplified form for sine 22.5 degrees. However, for sine 30 degrees we can take the square root of 2 minus root 1, so this is just root 2 minus 1 to root 1, or just 1, all divided by 2. So this gives our familiar value of sine 30 as 1 half. And similarly here, root 2 minus root 0, this gives us root 2, all divided by 2, as our familiar value for sine 45 degrees. Then for sine 60, root 2 plus root 1 gives us root 3, all over 2, as our familiar value for sine 60 degrees. Now for sine 67.5 degrees, once again, just like with 22.5 degrees, this nested expression can't be simplified, so this is actually already in the simplest possible exact form. Now, for the value of sine 75 degrees, we'll apply the same trick as we did for sine 15 degrees to denest the square root. So we'll first of all take out a factor of a half, so you have a half into 4 plus 2 root 3, all in the square root, all divided by 2. Then if we take this factor of a half in the square root and put this into the denominator as before, we have 2 root 2 in the denominator, and we're just left with 4 plus 2 root 3 in a square root on top. Then just like before, we can write this 4 plus 2 root 3 in a more useful form. So we'll write this as 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 1, just splitting up the 4 into a 3 and a 1, all divided by 2 root 2. Then you can see that 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 1 actually looks like this is now root 3 plus 1 all squared. So you can see now we'll be able to cancel out the squaring and the square root, which gives us just root 3 plus 1 all over 2 root 2. Then we rationalise the denominator here, just multiplying on the top and bottom by root 2, giving us root 2 into root 3 plus 1, all divided by, so multiplying this by root 2, you get 4. So this is our nice simplified expression for sine 75 degrees. And finally for sine 90 degrees, we know that sine 90 degrees is given by the square root of 2 plus root 4, all over 2, following our pattern. So root 4 we just write as 2, so this is the square root of 2 plus 2, so the square root of 4 all over 2, which is just 2 over 2, and this is indeed equal to 1, as we would expect for sine 90 degrees. Now we'll finish off just by looking at where some of these exact values come from. So we'll take it for granted that we know sine, cos and tan for 0, 30, 45, 60 and 90 degrees, we're more interested in the other values. We're going to use the half angle formulas for sine and cos to help us derive these values. So, the half angle formula, you can derive these from the double angle formula. I'll include a link in the description for this. We're going to use these, we'll first of all use these to try and find the value of sine 15 degrees. So, this is sine 30 over 2. So, then we can use the half angle formula here where theta is 30 to write this as the square root of 1 minus cos 30 degrees all over 2. So now we know that cos 30 degrees is the square root of 2 plus root 1 all over 2, which is root 3 over 2. So then we can substitute this into our expression to get the square root of 1 minus root 3 over 2, all divided by 2, all within this square root. So then multiplying the top and bottom of this fraction by 2, we can turn this into 2 minus root 3 all over 4, and then we can take the square root of 4 as just 2, take this outside of our square root, which gives us our 2 minus root 3 all over 2. And we could denest this as before if we like. And similarly for sine 22.5, we can write this as sine 45 divided by 2. So we can use the half angle formula where theta is 45. So we can write this as all in one big square root, 1 minus cos 45 degrees, all divided by 2. So now cos 45 degrees, we know that this is given, using our method, by the square root of 2 minus root 0 all over 2, or just root 2 over 2. So then we can replace in our formula then all in one big square root, 1 minus root 2 over 2, all of this divided by 2. Then multiplying the top and bottom of our fraction by 2 again, we end up with in one big square root, 2 minus root 2 all divided by 4, then we can take out this 4, and the square root of 4 gives us our 2 in the denominator, so you have root 2 minus root 2, all divided by 2, as our exact value for sine 22.5.
But for sine 67.5, we'll actually make use of the fact that sine theta is the same as cos 90 minus theta. So we can write this as cos 90 minus 67.5 is cos 22.5, or cos 45 divided by 2. So we can use the half angle formula for cos now, with theta equals 45, to write this as 1 plus cos 45, all divided by 2. We know that cos 45 is root 2 over 2, and then we divide all of this by 2. You can now multiply the top and bottom of the fraction here, which is all inside the square root, by 2, to get the square root of 2 plus root 2 all over 4. Then once again, we can take the square root of the 4, take this out of the square root symbol, just giving us 2 plus root 2 all over 2 as our expression for sine 67.5. And finally, for sine 75, we'll apply the same trick of writing this as cos 90 minus 75, so cos 15 degrees, which is cos 30 over 2. So we can use the cosine half angle formula with theta equals 30. We can write this as 1 plus cos 30 all over 2, which gives us, we've seen that cos 30 is root 3 over 2, so 1 plus root 3 over 2 all divided by 2. Then multiplying the top and bottom of this fraction by 2, we get 2 plus root 3 all over 4. Then as before, we can take this 4, take the square root of that, turn it into a 2, and take it out of our square root symbol, just leaving us with the nice expression root 2 plus root 3 all divided by 2. Then once again, we could denest this as before to get our expression for sine 75 degrees. So now we've seen where all of these exact values come from. I hope you find this useful when you're working with exact values of trig functions.